talked books this morning, so now it's time to talk movies with our film critic here in the Keys, Cheryl Rhodes. You can check out Cheryl's movie reviews every Sunday in Solaris Hill. Now, it's a little ironic, but Cheryl's actually going to talk with us about what they say is one of the worst movies ever made. So why would you want to go see it if it's bad? Well, apparently there's humor all throughout the film. Cheryl will give us all the details. Cheryl, thank you for being back on the show. Well, thank you, Jenna. It's uh, fun to talk about movies. Mm -hmm. And you're right, usually we talk about what's playing in Key West or my top 10 list. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we talk about special showings. And mm -hmm. there's one Thursday night at the Regal uh, that is uh, a showing of a film called Manos, The Hands of Fate. And it's considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. Ever made. Even worse than Plan 9 for, from Outer Space. Okay. <laughs> and uh, why would you want to go see a, a, a movie that's bad? is so bad it's good. Really? Uh, it's a cult film. It's mm -hmm. one that you love to go and laugh at. And to help you laugh at it, uh, it's being presented by a group called uh, Rift Tracks. And Rift Tracks is made up of those guys who used to do Mystery Science Theater 3000 on television. Mm -hmm. uh, Mystery Science Theater was a program that showed B-grade movies, old bad movies, and it had silhouettes up front of people talking about those movies in front of you. Mm -hmm. And they would rift on these movies, and they would make funny comments, and they would, uh, it's sort of like uh, when you're in college, sitting around watching a bad movie and everybody making comments. Right. Everybody. And so it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys that do it, the, the three guys, are uh, uh, Mike Nelson, uh, Kevin Murphy, and Bill Corbett. And uh, Mystery Science Theater ran from 1988 to 1999 and had 197 episodes. And Time Magazine says that it was one of the 100 best television shows ever. And in 1993, they did a showing of Manos, The Hands of Fate, mm -hmm. and uh, it made this unknown movie into a cult favorite. And the showing that's on Thursday night at the Regal at 8 o'clock is uh, the same movie, but it's new commentary. They're joking with it and rifting with it and commenting mm -hmm. on it all from scratch. Okay. Now, what kind of movie is it? Yeah, tell me. It's a, it's a horror movie. Okay. It's a very bad horror movie. Mm. It's a very badly made horror movie. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the story, it almost sounds like an old joke. It's uh, this family on vacation in the back country of Texas, and they get lost, can't find their hotel, and they stop at this spooky old house, and the door's opened by this sort of manservant who's very weird looking, uh, almost got like goat-like uh, uh, legs and stuff, and his name is Torgo. Mm -hmm. And he says, the master's not home, but he invites them in to spend the night. And things go from bad to worse. Rightfully uh, so. <laughs> yeah. The master wakes up. The mm -hmm. master has multiple wives. He worships an evil deity called Manos. And so our hapless travelers are now captives of this evil master. Uh, okay. And how did it get made? Yeah. Uh, it seems that there was an, a fertilizer salesman, mm -hmm. uh, which seems appropriate, mm -hmm. in El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. And he was very active in the local theater, and he got a walk-on part in the old television show Route 66 when it came through there and filmed. And he got to meet uh, the screenwriter, a Sterling Sullivan, who is a very famous screenwriter. And while drinking in a bar, he starts telling Sterling Sullivan that it's not hard to make a movie. Anybody can make a movie. I can make a horror movie really cheap. So they made a bet. So they made this movie, or or or. Harold P. Warren made this movie. He wrote it, he produced it, he directed it, and he stars in it. <laughs> and he made it for $19,000. Uh -huh. uh, he rented the equipment. Uh, it was a handheld camera that could only shoot 30, 30 seconds uh, at a time, half a minute mm -hmm. at a time. Uh, it didn't have any sound, so they had to go back and dub in all the voices afterwards. And he used a local crew and a local bunch of people and this is the only movie they ever made. It was so bad, they never made another movie. <laughs> uh, in fact, it was so bad that the crew behind his back when he was making the movie, they didn't refer to it as Manos, the Hands of Fate. They call it Mangos, the Can of Fruit. Oh, that's good. And, that's good. <laughs> and so he had a terrible time making this movie. Uh, there's very bad editing. Mm -hmm. uh, you see crew in the background sometimes. You see the clapboard uh, in some scenes. There are scarves that disappear from a woman's head and reappear scene that to scene. That sounds horrible. It is. <laughs> it is. But, but people are going to laugh at right. it and they're going to have fun at it. Right. Now, when they had the premiere of the movie in El Paso, mm -hmm. it was so bad that the audience howled and hooted and, and hated it. 
and the the cast slipped out the back door so they didn't have to face the audience. Smart cast. Very smart cast. <laughs> now Harold P. Wilson, uh, Har Harold P. Warren wasn't as smart. Uh, he got attacked by a woman with her handbag who didn't like the way the movie turned out. Smart woman. Smart woman. <laughs> and uh, he never made another movie. Uh, he once approached the cinematographer about making a movie, and the cinematographer said, no way, yeah. never again. And uh, nobody got paid. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody made any money on it. The only two people in the cast that actually got anything was the little girl, uh, Jackie uh, uh, Naiman. She got a bicycle for being in, this, in the movie. <laughs> And the dog in the movie got a bag of dog food. That's good. That's a the total payment. And dog food. <laughs> well, apparently he did something right, though, because we're talking about it, and it's playing at the Regal Cinema this Thursday. That's true. Uh, you've got you've got Harold Harold P. Warren as the father of the of the family that gets stopped over at the old house. Uh, you've got Tom Naiman uh, as the master, and you've got John Reynolds as the uh, uh, Torgo, the servant who answers the door. Now, as you watch the movie, you think that the guy that plays Torgo is pretty strange. And mm -hmm. either he's a very good actor, or as the rumor was, he was on LSD through the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was stoned out of his mind oh, the whole time. No, the movie. Okay, we're running out of time, but this movie, it just keeps getting worse. Oh, know? it's worse than I said. <laughs> but right. fun. Okay, very fun. It does sound fun. I'll give you that. Well, thank you for sharing this Great. review of this movie. And hopefully, hey, they can check out the worst movie ever made this Thursday. Absolutely. And check out Cheryl's Movies Reviews every Sunday in Solaris Hill. That's going to do it for me today, everyone. I thank you for tuning in this morning, and I invite you to join me again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and back at 8.30 a.m. Take care.